chagrin for mass trauma. And when the first tower collapsed, and this vivid memory of a 10-story high dust cloud barreling towards me, the chaos eventually gave way to silence. So many families were coming around with posters and flyers for their loved ones, and that was the sacred moment of you just needed to absorb it. You just needed to be quiet and try to bring them in and, and do what you could for them. So busy doing what they could for their patients and the families of victims, Dahir and his colleagues hadn't begun to process their own emotions. Coming out of that was probably more traumatic for me. Seeing it on TV and seeing the, the worldwide reaction was, I, it was the first time I broke into tears. That was coming out of that isolation or that sense of intensity of this one place with these people that I'm with and then re-entering the world. The first responders at Ground Zero re-entered the world as changed people. I had to remain the rock. So I um, literally took my emotions and put them to the side. Um, I had to be there to talk to staff that wanted to talk. I had to interact with the families. And I didn't realize how deeply I pushed my emotions away. Jack Delaney's physical injuries forced his retirement, and both he and John Episcopo still deal with the mental toll of that day. I always had flashbacks and nightmares. I used to have the, the dreams um, on a consistent basis. I, I've woken up a couple of times with the smell. For Episcopo and some other first responders, seeking treatment for post-traumatic stress wasn't easy. Speaking to a therapist that's not in the business is difficult because there's certain, it's like talking a different language, I have to explain everything. But it, it definitely helped, it kind of gave me the, the permission to feel the emotions that, that I felt. Presbyterian Hospital psychologist Dr. Joe Andrasini has worked with 9-11 survivors to overcome that stigma. In September 2001, she was shooting burn patients with PTSD. After 9-11, her work became all the more urgent. Hold on, Dad. Okay. And put it on. Okay. Uh, she treated pioneers using virtual reality films to transport her patients back to the site she found for that day. Many people will tell you even to this day how much kind of concern is there The stress is overwhelming, the seeing death in many levels, it's the same type of experience. So there's no doubt in my mind that
puts them at higher risk of severe illness if they get COVID-19. But they say the threat of isolation during the pandemic was just as debilitating as the threat of the virus itself.